seven. Now, the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and a good conscience and of faith unfeigned from which some having swerved have turned aside unto grain, vain, jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding 2 Timothy, Brother Elmo, chapter 1, 5 through 7. All right, very good. When I call to remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois, and thy mother Eunice, Am I persuaded that in thee also? Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Yeah. I want to preach to be young, gifted, and black. <laughs> a recipe for change. To be young, gifted, and black. Yeah. A recipe for change. How should we interpret these times with President Obama at the helm of our nation? All right. I interpret these times to be an opportunity to be inspired with, well, to be inspired and with that inspiration to work toward change. President Obama will not bring all the change that this world needs by himself. He said in his inaugural, inaugural address, he admitted that change will require everybody's participation. I'm quoting him now. What is required of us now is a new era of responsibility. Yeah. A recognition on the part of every American that we have duties to ourselves, our nation, and the world. Duties that we do not grudgingly accept, but rather seize gladly firm in the knowledge that there is nothing so satisfying to the spirit, so defining of our character than giving our all to a difficult task. End of quote by President Obama. Our scripture lesson taken from Paul's letter to Timothy speaks an encouraging word to us during these challenging moments in our history. The church in this epistle is in transition. Yeah. Yeah. Timothy, a new young pastor, yeah. Yeah. has taken the helm of leadership. Yet the text suggests that all is not well with Timothy. Perhaps Brother Art Walker, he stressed by the magnitude of the task ahead. Or perhaps the threat of persecution by non-Christians was just too great. Maybe he has doubts about his ability to lead. Maybe he's worried that he does not possess what it takes 
to be an effective leader. Timothy needs encouragement. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Paul's letter is written to meet that need. Yeah. Praise Lance. Paul starts in a unique place and opens the conversation with a short history lesson. On, Nothing like history. Good job today, Sister Karen Davis, in reminding us about what's happening. You know, I sometimes tune in the buzz, and it just bothers me how so many folk call in and that are so backwards. And, and, and these, these are our people. They don't want to know nothing. They don't want to know anything about who they are and from whence they came. And, and, and it's already been said, if you don't know your history, you're going to be doomed to repeat everything that happened to it. I mean, life is about making adjustments along the way. And if you don't know anything about where you came from, ain't no way in the blank you're going to know where you're going. Because your history and your past charts a course for your present and your future. Everybody talks about faith. I got more faith than anybody I know. You know why? Because I work backwards. Well, you know, Reverend, the Bible says we walk by, what is it, faith and not by sight. Well, no. 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 I walk by hindsight. You understand? I have seen more as to how I'm going and where I'm going based upon where I've been. The reason my faith is so strong because I look back over stuff that I came through that didn't no, I in the world I was going to get through it and got through it and that strengthens me for the next step. And so Paul starts in a unique place and opens the conversation with a short history lesson. Verse 5, verse 5, look at verse 5. Verse 5 says, I have been reminded of your sincere faith which first lived in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice. What a powerful and appropriate Sankofa moment. We got Simba here, but Sankofa, I, I wish I had some time. I wish I had some time. A powerful Sankofa moment. I got my masters from Notre Dame on our Simba program. Praise Lance. And so he says, he says, he, he, he says, a moment of looking back as a means of moving forward. Right. Say it again, David. A moment of looking back as a means of moving forward. Right, right. You can't move forward until you look back. From this text, we are invited to celebrate, celebrate the faith of the ancestors. As we reflect on the election of President Obama, we must realize that none of our celebration will be possible without the hard work of the ancestors. Thank God for the ancestors. Paul proclaimed, I thank God for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Thank God for Ruth, Naomi, and Esther. And you know what? We need to stop at some point or add some stuff when we get up in church, you know. I thank God for being here. I give honor to God and first give it on to God and then give it on to everybody. And we need to, you know, listen, you heard somebody else say that. And sit on down. If you're going to stand up, make it meaningful. When the Jews stand up, thank God for Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and they go ahead on and they talk about their patriarchs, their ancestors. You need to say Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, but you still need to start asking the, the, the name of your grandmother. Do you know your grandmother? Do you know your great-grandmother? Well, if you don't, get down to the Freedom Center and find out who you are. Here you are in an all-black church with all black people, and you standing up hollering about every Abraham Lincoln and George Washington, and you ain't said nothing about the folk that birthed you into the world. 
and made it possible for you to be where you are, call their name sometime. The only time we ever call our ancestors' name is when we're having one of these ceremonies, you know, when the, the ladies come and do the dance and stuff. And, we, and then we get up and we, we're going to have a, 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 a thing that before we go further, let's let the oldest one in the room ask permission. Oh, come on. I ain't impressed. Make it meaningful. Obama admitted, I'm preaching here, that we can't do it alone. Thank God for the ancestors. They represent a holy history of men and women chosen and equipped by God to do God's will. They are Paul's example of faith in action. Now, as we review our people's holy history, we have two to have cause to be thankful. I don't know about you today, but thanks be to God for depositing within our ancestors the gifts, the talents, the skills necessary to survive and forge for us a pathway through bitter struggle so that our history will be brighter. You got all this stuff, you know, and the, the, the main thing that is missing, as I said today, in our church is that a folk who know stuff are not sharing the stuff they know. Got all this stuff going on for the youth and all this stuff in the band and all this stuff. Please. And everybody, you know, everybody dancing and just dancing. When they get through dancing and then some of them got the audacity to shout. While they're dancing and after they dance. I'm preaching here. And then when, the, when it's this time in the service. A bunch of performers is all they are. I don't know what they just shouted about. Was it because of something that Kurt Franklin said? But when the word comes down, when the word is being preached, when you're being taught about why you ought to shout and what you shout about and the person you're shouting about, you ain't nowhere to be found. And all of you who know better, because these are your kids, When I came up, mothers would go outside and around the house. Because sometimes we didn't have air condition. The church windows would be open. And you could hear one of them, well, where, mom? I wasn't going to come here. And she'd be dragging him all around the church. And drag him right on in and drag him right down to the front row. But while you in here enjoying the Lord and praising the Lord and lifting up holy hands, your kids are laying behind the furnace. Your daughters are laying in the arms of some little young book behind the furnace, down behind children's church. He's 17, she's 15, they ain't got no business downstairs, but yet they're down there with all of the mime stuff on. I'm preaching here, and you will know where to be found. What Paul, what Paul, what Paul, what Paul is telling Timothy here, it was our ancestors that brought us to where we are and paved the way for us. Did you hear what I said? There was no way that all of these pleasures we now enjoy, we enjoy it on the backs of those who died that we might have a better day and they deserve a better praise from us they deserve to have their names called they deserve a better attitude they deserve better conduct out of us we are an embarrassment to them I was at the Urban League the other day some of you were there 
at the Lions presentation and the man, the president of University of something, Urbana in Illinois. And he was a statistician and I'm gonna send and get those stats because he did something that was profound. He talked about the baby boomers in those ages and then he went on now and he said, sadly to say that the worst group we have now, this is white and black, are the ages 25 to 35. They're the dumbest. They are the least knowledgeable about anything. All they want to do is just run through life. They don't have anything. And their, their future is bleak. There was a time when I went to high school and Brother Penn went to high school. You really didn't have to go to college. You could come out and get a job at GE and get a job at Stearns and Foster and get a job at Philip Carey and get a job at Saltbrook and get a job at Lukenheimer and get a job and work 40 years and send kids to college. But now that age group is blood, duh, they're wired to nowhere. And we sit and look at it. And these are our children on their way to nowhere. Because they don't have a background of who they are or who they are. And ain't interested in finding out. But you see the trick. The, here's how the devil does it. The trick is when they get older and it's no longer cute. And they got to do stuff. In order to make a living, they can't do it. And when you look around, you got a 35-year-old kid still standing at your house, something wrong. And you deserve to be by yourself. You deserve to have your house by yourself. You don't want any kids laying around. You need all the space you need. I had a little young person come to my house not too long ago. Rev, you mean all this is yours and Sister Lynch's? You mean all this big house is just you and Miss Lynch here live here? I said, yeah. I say it's just big enough for both of us. You get out of here. Now. And we just let it happen. We don't look at the statistics. You were there. You were there, I'm so proud of you. I was going to mention you and all of my members who work at the Urban League. It's just crazy what's going on. And the reason I preach this sermon instead of the other one for 11 o'clock is because this one is needed for this particular 11 o'clock. Because this is where all these young ones are up in here dancing with all that crap. And guess what's getting ready to happen? Reverend Lynch is getting ready to sit a lot of them down. If you don't want to come in church, then don't dance. Go somewhere else and get your praise on. Like a whole lot of them have. Thanks be to God for that legacy their blood, their sweat, and their tears. From their struggle, today's generation has inherited strength of character, a vibrant culture of community, and a deep spirituality that knows God as the liberator and Jesus Christ as the one who identified with the oppressed. They should know that. Thank God for the ancestors whose faith led them to pray the words of James Weldon Johnson, and you sang it this morning, 
God of our weary years and God of our silent tears. Thou who has brought us thus far along the way. Thou who has by thy might led us into the light. Keep us forever in the path we pray. Give that a hand today. Thank God for the ancestors. Thank God, thank God for their inspirational example of faith and their willingness to go deep within themselves and use the gifts and talents that God gave them for God's glory. Thanks be to God for Richard Allen and Absalom Jones. Here you got, can't even get these little suckers in the church. Can I get a witness? And yet, Absalom Jones and Richard Allen got kicked out of the church for sitting one pew too far up to the front. I preached to Absalom Jones there at Christ Church not long ago. Some of you might have been there. And all these white highfalutin folks, Absalom Jones said the blank with this, I ain't going to be taking no more of this. So he and Richard Allen said, I'm out of here. Richard started the Bethel, uh, the big Bethel AME Church, Mother Bethel in Philadelphia, the first African-American church. And Absalom Jones started the first African Episcopal church. And they still celebrate his day to this day. And thank God for them. They said, we ain't going to be pushed around. They got out of there. Their leadership and organizational skills were used to create a free American Society, Bethel AME Church, and the African Episcopal Church at St. Thomas down in the Bahamas. Anybody been there? Thanks be to God for Alice Walker, Lorraine Hansberry, and Zora Neal Hurston, who showed us real life through their creative writing skills, giving us the color purple and a raisin in the sun, and their eyes were watching God. Thanks be to these kind of people. Can I get a witness? Thanks be to God for Martin Luther King Jr., Malcolm X, and Henry McNeil Turner, who use their powerful voices to let us know that we can have a dream that black is beautiful and it's beautiful to be black, and most importantly, God is black too. Priestland. 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 I said Wednesday night at the Bible class, and we're talking about the 6,000-year creation and all that stuff. I said, all right, cool, if you want to believe in that. The only thing wrong with the Creation Museum, when you go over there, you look around, you got Adam, blonde hair and blue eyes. You got Eve, blonde hair and blue eyes. And when I look at my mother and father and look at all of the ancestors, I've been to South Africa, just got back. I've been to Ghana. I've been to all of those. I've been to the, uh, to the Gambia. I've been to Senegal. And none of them got brown, I mean, blue eyes and blonde hair. And let me say this to you. They hid Jesus in Egypt. And last time I looked, you couldn't hide a blonde, blue-eyed baby down in black Egypt. Say amen, Rep. I'm preaching here. And your kids need to be in here hearing what I'm saying now because you ain't going to tell them. And what you need to do is go home and take them blue-eyed, blonde Jesuses out of your house. I don't care how much light it gives. Get it out. Something wrong with you. It's a distortion of who you are and whose you are. How in the world can you ever know which way you're going when you don't know where you've been? Y'all heard the story, you know, about the guy, the train, the conductor, one of my old, you know, old trains that used to run from Georgia up here that brought us all up here, you know, with the coal, the choo-choo. Yeah, well, the conductor got sick. And uh, I said, well, somebody got to drive this train. <laughs> I said, we got anybody here know how to drive it? Everybody said, no, man, I, don't know. I really don't know how to do it. So this black brother had been watching. He said, I know how to do it. Said, Everybody looks and, uh, <laughs> no, 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 we, <laughs> best y'all can do is be porters. We know ain't nowhere in the world you can be the engineer. Now, we don't, have, we don't play that. Said, all right, you sure we need somebody because trains got to run on time. He said, yeah. So he had his cap on. He jumped up 
on the, on the engine, and he sat down behind. He said, I'm right, ready to go, and he turned his head around backwards. And they said, oh, get down. You already going the wrong way. Oh, get down from there. We're going this way, not that way. And a lot of us are going the wrong way and think we are headed in the right direction. Unless you know where you've been, you can't never know where you're going. How you going to shout on Kirk Franklin? <laughs> How you going to shout on that other girl? What's her name? Yolanda Adams. How you going to shout on Juanita Bynum? What kind of life is she living? How in the world can you get a shout on your praise on with somebody like that? I got a problem with folk who are in the church and choosing the wrong heroes and sheroes. All these folk I just talked about, good God Almighty, at least learn a little bit about them. Did you hear what she was doing today? At least learn something about the folk that made a way for you. I'm getting ready to be on the downtown, as you know, and I hope all of you come. I can't do this time like I did for you at my 50th wedding anniversary. I paid for it and brought all of you down free. I'm going to say how much you love me now. Cost, it costs $150 to get in. I'm going to see how much you love me now. <laughs> they honored me for being one of the great living Cincinnatians. And so that ain't chicken feed. I mean, that ain't, you know, you know but, but, but guess, but, but I want you to just be there to hear what my acceptance speech is going to be. That's really going to be the clincher because of how do I feel about that? about having somebody else to think that you have done something enough to warrant that kind of honor and try to get it to you before you die. Now, everybody, all y'all be here for my funeral because it's free. <laughs> but if I put a charge of 15, 20 cents at the door, the choir wouldn't be full. I'm preaching here. No, I'm just trying to be facetious in order to make a point. I'm just trying to be facetious here to, in order to make a point. I'm saying that there are folk that have no idea of how great we are and how far God has brought us, especially us. No one has had to put up with what we've had to put up with, except in the Native American in this whole country. No one. And yet, look how far we have come. If they had had their brothers, we would have been on reservations like the Indians. But guess what? God and our forefathers said, no way, Jose. They wouldn't do to us what they did to the Indian because there was something in us that would not let us succumb to being slaves even though we had shackles on us but yet they sang the song before I'd be a slave I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Martin Luther King said that you can't enslave me although I'm behind these bars my mind is free. Can I get a witness? We need to unlock the minds of our children. That's what's got them. And what gets me is the fact that all of these rappers, even Lil Wayne now, is trying to go mainstream. He's on his way to jail, but on his way to jail, he's trying to go mainstream. Because Lil Wayne figured out he got a whole lot of money. And Lil Wayne has figured out he's a big dummy. And Lil Wayne has figured out now that I'm going to use this jail time and get some smarts about how to get myself together so that I can handle this money. Because right, right, right. you only come here one time. 
50 cent learned it. 50 cent go, oh, God bless you. 50, 50, 50 learned it. P. Diddy learned it. Kanye learned it because Kanye had a smart mama. Boy, you got to rap, but you got to know what you're rapping about. I can call it a roll. But you see, our kids are stuffed full of that stuff and listen to all them cuss words and they don't have no clue as to what's going on. And it's your fault. Well, Reverend, he's tall now. You know I don't have a husband. Well, where is his daddy? Well, his daddy don't care about him. Make his daddy care about him. Drop him on his daddy's doorstep. Put a note around his neck and say, this is your son and I'm gone. is out for letting these daddies get away free. If you had 10 years with him and he was manageable for the first 10 years and then when he gets 11 and 12 and starts becoming unmanageable, it's time to go to daddy. I ain't gonna have it up in here. No, but you done fallen in love with him now. Oh, I love him so much, Reverend. Please go get him out again. Speak for him again. Your name carries a lot of weight, Reverend. Please get him one more time. And I said, why don't you leave him there this time? I mean, he's not in there for murder. Leave him there. Let him rest. Let him think. That's what penitentiary is about. It's to get penitent. That's the root meaning of the word. Penitent. Repentance. Get some order about yourself. Let me finish. I've taken too much time. Assessing our gifts, Paul encourages Timothy to fan the flame, reignite, and use those gifts for service. Why is this image of fanning using? In Boy Scouts, I learned a long time ago, when you fan the flame, it'll grow and spread. Let your gift grow, spread, and touch as many lives as it can. Then Paul says, do not be afraid. God has not given us the spirit of fear, right? right. Howard Thurman puts it this way. Fear is one of the persistent hounds of hell that dog the footsteps of the poor, the dispossessed, and the disinherited. Far too long, our community was conditioned to fear. From slavery to the middle of the 20th century, black people had to operate in fear as a mechanism for survival. Jim Crow taught us to fear white people. The Tuskegee experiment taught us to fear the doctor. Police brutality taught us to fear the police. We are a disinherited community ruled by fear. Scared everything. Scared everything. I don't want to take that shot. Yeah. Scared of everything. But if you got God, this is what gets me. If you are a Christian, they ask me all the time, Reverend, 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 how in the world aren't you afraid to walk down through them corridors and them halls down there and get up in them white people's faces and say the stuff you say? You ain't scared? No. I'm a man. I'm a man. And I'm just talking to other men. You act like I'm going down there to talk to God. I mean, why am I afraid? Well, you know, Rem, you, you know, and a lot of us got these old jobs and we are so much in debt that we can't quit. Like the man sang the song years ago, you load 16 tongues and what do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt. St. Peter, don't you call me because I can't go. I owe my soul to the company store. But when the preacher try to tell you to get out of debt, he trying to get in my business. No, I ain't in your business. I know you coming upstairs to get money all the time to pay your rent. How can I not be in your business? How can I not know you're broke? How can I not know you mismanage your money? How can I not notice that somebody say budget to you, you say what is budget? You can't go through life playing numbers and hoping that your day will come. Our day will come. 
And we no, 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 that won't happen. Stop playing the numbers. Save your money. If you got a job, work it until you can do better. And then move on. Can I get a witness here? If you knew what our folk went through in order to get you raised, you'd have a fit. I ain't going to ever do what my mom and daddy did. And my mom and dad went to church all the time, and they turned out fine. And when you were going to church all the time, you turned out fine, too. You were fine. And now that you're out of jail again, why don't you this time? <laughs> this time. We got a recovery ministry here. We got stuff now that can help you if you want to be helped. I'm through here in a few seconds, but I got to tell you this. Don't be afraid. God has chosen you. God's prepared you. And God has anointed you. Paul said, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. God's spirit will give us power. The word power in Greek is dunamis. And it is where we get the words like dynamite and dynamic. You know why I love the old shows? I love good times. It was stupid and silly. Dynamite! I love to hear him say that. I love to hear him say that. Because he was busting through stuff. Dynamite! I love that. Dynamite's got power. And that's what we should deal with. Dunamis is a noun that represents a miraculous ability to go forth and do what needs to be done with authority and strength. This term is used to describe power working inside of us, Keith. It is a power that created the universe, preach, Lynch. It is a power that got Jesus out of the grave. It's the same power that woke you up this morning. This power dwells in us and grows in us as we get closer to God in prayer and service. And when this power is in full faith, full force, it manifests itself in spectacular ways. The first way it manifests itself is in love. This kind of love is what Jesus, another young, gifted, and black young man. Can I get a witness? He operated under this power. The gifts he had were all for humankind, and his gifts and his healing, his wisdom, his power were distributed out of love. And we too must operate out of the love for God with one another. Come on here, Lynch. In our home and in our church and in our community, we must work in love. Love is one of the divine virtues. It's divine because of what, Lynch? It transcends race. It transcends beliefs and backgrounds. And what it did to me last week and what he did to me and what she said to me five weeks ago and two days ago, listen, don't worry about that. Let that go. It's February now. It's divine, looking past faults, and it meets needs. Secondly, God's power maintains itself in a sound mind. That it translated into self-discipline, and that's what we need. We need self-discipline today with our kids. Moreover, it's a commitment to be diligent and obedient to the heavenly vision. It is most of all spending every moment and every day wisely. Yeah. Priest Lynch, yeah. I heard one of the great professors of Martin Luther King, Dr. Benjamin May, say, I've only just a minute, right. only 60 seconds in it. Forced upon me, can't refuse it. Yeah. Didn't seek it, yeah. didn't choose it. Yeah. But it's up to me to use it. Right. I must suffer yeah. if I lose it. Right. Give an account if I abuse it. Yeah. Just a tiny little minute, yeah. but eternity is in it. Yeah. Every second counts. <laughs> Woo! Every minute counts. We ain't got no time to waste. Can I get a witness? Our time has come. We are young. Gifted and black. The perfect ingredients for a recipe for change. A recipe for change. The torch, the ancestors, carrot is being handed off to us. We must bring change to a world that's dying. The stakes are high and the obstacles are many. Yet, my brothers and sisters, change is possible. It's possible because why? We are young, gifted, and black. And we got the right recipe for change. We are young, which means we are full of energy. 
and brimming with fresh ideas. We are gifted, graced by God Almighty, with talents and abilities that will bring heaven down to earth. We are black. I said we are black. The sun kissed of the great grandchildren. Can I get a witness? Of Mother Africa, thousands of miles away and several hundred years removed. We are a strong black people. I'm preaching here. Walking in the footsteps of our ancestors. We have a call from the Almighty. God to stir up our gifts. Can I get a witness? And heal this land. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, then will I hear from heaven if they will turn from their wicked way, I will heal their land. Can I get a witness? We need to wake up because the time is now. We need to wake up and tell our children that they are young, gifted, and black. There are no throwaways. Everybody counts. Every child is a young child. Every child has got a gift. I don't care if you had a baby out of wedlock. You were young, gifted, and black. And that's a fact. I'm glad today. I'm glad today. I'm glad today that I know God. I know God will make a way. I know God has made a way. Did he make a way for you? Did he make a way for you? Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Hey, yeah, stir up your gift, stir it up, 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 stir up your gift, stir it up, stir it up, stir it up, can I get a witness, stir it up, stir it up, it's in there. Stir up! Stir up! Stir up! Yeah! 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 Ah! Yeah! Ain't it alright? Ain't God alright? Say yes! Say yes! Ah! Yeah! <laughs> The door of the church is open. The door is open. Somebody ought to come. Somebody ought to come today. The door of the church is open. Young, gifted, and blessed.